Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day so far. Today, we're gonna to be going over how to set up Checkpoint Remote Access VPN Automatic Update. Um, and this is going to be focusing on the standalone VPN client. Of course, if you're leveraging Sandblast Agent or now renamed to Harmony Endpoint, the Endpoint Policy Management Server would handle the automatic update of your client. So this is in regards specifically to the standalone VPN client. Um, and so for here in our test environment, I have an E84.30 endpoint and we'll be doing an upgrade to the current recommended version, which is E84.50. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first things first is you're going to want to navigate to the endpoint security homepage and I have a couple of URLs and I'll drop those all in the description of the video for easy access. Uh, but what you want to do is once you get here, scroll down check the recommended release. As we can see here, it is E84.50. Um, and so once you locate the version that you want to upgrade to, just go ahead and click on the Windows Clients button. Assuming you want to upgrade Windows, of course, and then scroll down and navigate to the standalone clients downloads. And you will see a section specifically dedicated to the automatic upgrade file. And I just downloaded it myself, so I already have it, but you'll go ahead and just navigate to this link and grab that automatic upgrade file. All right, and so from in here, um, I will drink, uh, drop a link to the um, official uh, guide as well of the official uh, documentation for the instructions. But I did also leverage a, an SK because I did run into an issue when actually setting this up. Um, where is it? This one right here. And I will drop this in the description as well. But this basically tells you the same thing that the official documentation does, which is to pretty much um, drop these files, track.cav and track underscore ver.txt into the following directory and then chmod 775 them. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the downloaded file. You can see that once you have this file downloaded, it's going to be a single cab file. What you actually need to do is you need to right click this and extract it or depending on what, um, you know, depending on what you're using, WinRAR, 7-zip, whatever, just go ahead and extract that cab file. Uh, and it will give you a track.msi as well as a ver.ini. And so the track underscore ver.txt file should already exist on your checkpoint gateway. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually grab this numerical value and you're going to want to replace it with the track underscore ver dot text that's already in the firewall and of course migrate uh, this msi uh, i'm sorry this cab file as well so let's go ahead and uh, jump into that really quickly so i already have win scp set up here of course if you don't have it set to um, automatically log into expert mode you can use the Clish command set user admin shell slash bin slash bash. I'll put that in the description as well. Uh, and that will allow you to automatically log in uh, with that SCP. Otherwise you may run into an error. Uh, but jumping into here, uh, let's navigate over here on the left-hand side, my host machine. And over here on the right, I'm connected already to um, this directory, but let's go ahead and start from the root here just for you guys to kind of follow along. And again, so we are going to fwdir, which uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's going to be opt cp suite, uh, whichever version you're on. I'm on R81, but this guide should be applicable to anybody, um, I believe, R8020 or above. And then go to fw1. And then from in here, you can just follow the directory path. So conf extender uh, c shell. All right, so in here, you may already have a track.cab um, or not, but you should definitely have a track underscore ver. And so, like I said, you just need to replace this numerical value. So that's already done. And we're also going to go ahead and rename the cab file to track.cab. Drop it in there. All right, halfway done already. Just go ahead and 
This should only actually really be required according to official documentation if you're running R71, uh, but we'll go ahead and do it just in case. And cvpn dir is going to go all the way back to opt and then go to cpcvpn, whichever version you're on. And then we want to go to htdocs, snx, and cshell. All right, track that cab as well. Go ahead and uh, drag that in here. I believe track.cab as well as track.ver also may not exist already in here as well. Um, and actually, so I don't have the track underscore ver. So actually, it's a good point. We have to go ahead and grab that file, or you can, of course, create a new text file. But I'm just going to grab it from uh, the directory and then copy and paste it. Extender C shell. Shell and SNX and C shell. All right. And now that we have the track underscore ver as well in here, we are pretty much set to just do the, the ch mod commands. pretty much just copy and paste let's do one at a time just to be safe all right and so that's all set um and so at this point i do want to kind of show you what this looks like from the endpoint perspective um, and just to confirm, you guys also do need to have, uh, from smart console and global properties under remote access, uh, where is it? Uh, for some reason my microphone cut out at this part during the recording. So I am re-recording this audio just in case it sounds a little bit different. Uh, but here at this point, I am just pointing out the client upgrade mode needs to be set to ask user, which is in the global properties of the gateway object under remote access and point connect. Um, of course, it could be set to ask user or also set to always upgrade. Um, but of course, if it's, of course, if it's set to do not upgrade, we can't test the upgrade mechanism. And so I'll, let's go ahead and try to connect at this point during the setup and see what the symptoms are. So it does detect that the client is not the latest version and we went ahead and accepted the prompt and it says it's downloading the new version from the server. But here at this point, the upgrade will never complete and it'll just kind of stall out at this point until it times out. Um, and so the particular reason for this is because the, um, the Gaia portal is being hosted on port 443, uh, which is the, the default setting. Um, and for whatever reason, it's conflicting with the mechanism that the remote access auto upgrade uses to pull the file down. And so the simple fix for this is to go to the gateway object in smart console, as we can see here. Go to the platform portal and we want to just change the default port you may or may not see 443 uh, there actually in that line for you um, but if not you can just add the colon and then put 4434 okay so we need to change the default port from 443 to 4434 all right now we're going to go ahead and install the policy here 
and take a look and see what the symptoms are after changing the default port. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and initiate another connect. And at this point, we are gonna have the same symptoms as the first time. This is because um, anytime you make a modification to your VPN settings, typically, even after a policy install, the changes may not take effect. What you're gonna to wanna to actually do is a CVPN stop and a CVPN start, which we're gonna do here in a second. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this one more time. Perfect. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. So now we've progressed one step further to where we do have proper communication being taken place. Um, but then we're getting hit by another roadblock here, which is client upgrade has failed. Um, and so we'll go ahead and click OK on this. And this is the last kind of roadblock that we need to, to get fixed here. Um, and I actually found this on, um, on a Checkmates post. And pretty much we just need to edit this snx.location.com file and add this extra string. Uh, and that will resolve this particular issue. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So first things first, let's navigate to this directory. cvpndir conf includes. Conf includes, and let's go ahead and navigate to the snx.location.conf file. And he mentions to put it in right after this in between the location and alias. So go ahead and copy this. Go ahead and paste it, save it. Let's do another CVPN stop. and another CVPN start here and take a look and see what happens. Okay, and there we go. Magic. So this should be upgrading us now from E84.30 to E84.50. As you can see here, it is it's pretty quickly. Um, also quick note, the user does not need administrative privileges, um, so it's it's definitely really good uh, for all types of users, even standard ones. This update should push through without any administrative intervention required. All right, upgrade has been completed. Let's go ahead and right click on an agent, go to help and about, and there we are, E84.50. Um, all right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys end up setting this up, drop a comments below, and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks and have a good day, take care.